Welcome. Thank you. When was the last time we recorded? I feel like it was maybe during was COVID, during COVID right? Over Zoom. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. it was when I was actually separated. It was. Because mm-hmm. I think we talked about that and yeah. then I got back together and then... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Now I'm divorced. So would love to revisit that topic with you <laughs> a little bit. But I was listening to you on another podcast interview and you were talking about how you started this wellness company essentially when you had never been so unwell. And that really resonated with me because I had a year in the past year where I was very unwell. And um, it was kind of hard to like navigate like having this wellness platform and also being so completely yeah. unwell. So I would love to rewind to that time in your life and um, we'll start there. <laughs> I think when you set out to start a business, it consumes you. You have to eat, sleep, live, breathe. I mean, it's like birthing a baby. I mean, Pevolve's like my animals and my children. This is my third child, but you, it takes everything out of you. And I think a lot of people don't talk about that enough is that if you really are going to set out to start something, like you have to be ready to sacrifice a lot. I mean, probably for two years, I didn't go home for a holiday, a birthday, nothing. Like didn't see my family because I'm busy, I'm working. I'm, you know, that that comes first because it's, you're just so like driven to get this going and you come last. You know, you say yes to everything. You will work all hours of the night, all day. And like, you're the last person to be like, am I okay? You know, it's, it's all about everybody else. And then it comes time for you. And that definitely, I think you, your body can sustain that for a minute until it definitely can't any longer. And, you know, I say this all the time, but your body will give you clues and will talk to you. And it's all about how you can tune in and kind of listen to those signals and catch them before it gets too late. Yeah, I just had therapy yesterday and we were talking about this synergy between work and money and myself. So he said when it comes to your career, it's not just like you and your job. It's in my case, but probably in a lot of cases, it's myself, the customer and the money. Mm-hmm. And he's like you're sacrificing yourself for the customer and maybe the money. He's Mm -hmm. like, but it has to be synergistic among all of those three things. Otherwise it's like a three-legged stool where eventually at some point it's going to topple over. Yeah. And, you know, I think that when we get into these, I don't know, situations where we're really overwhelmed and really stressed and burnt out, we then become really susceptible to other things happening. And that happened to you, right? Where you got Lyme Lyme disease. disease. Yeah. So what was that like for you? I mean, I was very lucky where I actually found the ticks on me. So like within three months, I mean, woke up one morning and just felt like you have the flu. Like it's for me, at least you can talk to so many different people and everybody's going to have different symptoms and different, a different journey. But for me, it really was overnight of feeling like, oh my God, I'm so, so, so sick. I think for a lot of people, it maybe takes years to fester or kind of bubble up because they're very stressed or something traumatic happens in their life. But for me, I think I was in such a compromised state. I mean, I was, you know, running a growing business. It was COVID. I was getting divorced from my co-founder. It was all these kind of crazy things that were happening to me. And I was, I'm okay. I'm good. Smiling through it, crying at night, but smiling through it. And I think my body was trying to tell me for so long that you need to change how you're living your life. But I wouldn't listen until finally it was like, we're going to make you listen to us. Um, Looking back, I'm, you know, it was very long journey to get to where I am today. And I'm in an unbelievable place health wise and everything. But um, I'm almost kind of happy that it happened because I don't know if I would have actually changed a lot of things that I was doing in the way that I was living. Um, if it wasn't for something really major like that, where I physically couldn't get out of bed, Hmm. I physically couldn't work the way that I was working. I couldn't work out the way that I was working out. You know, I couldn't just all these different things that I really had to stop and be like, if you don't really look at this and change this, you know, you're not going to get back to where you were, even be better than how you were. I think more importantly, what I learned during, you know, the past four years of that journey was really the emotional side of things. 
I think for a long time, once I found out I had Lyme and I started doing all the treatments and antibiotics and IVs and all different types of things, it was very like surface level healing. And I'd be good for a couple of weeks and then bad week and good weeks and bad weeks. But until I started dealing with a lot of the emotional shit, I never really kind of got to the other side. And I think a lot of people don't realize that holding on to a lot of that baggage, drama, whatever you want to call it, you know, it you can't fully like be free and release yourself and mm. get to that next stage. So powerful. And that resonates so much with me right now and probably a lot of people listening. Yeah. And when you were talking, I was thinking back to my own experience last summer when I got super sick from Botox and it derailed my entire life. Yeah. And it was very traumatizing. I'm still trying to like recover from that whole thing. But when I look back on it and I've talked about this, I think on my last solo, I don't think I would change it because it set into motion all of these things that did need to change. Mm -hmm. You know, my marriage unraveled around that time. And um, I don't think that that necessarily would have happened had I not been as sick as I was. And, you know, I just had to reevaluate a lot of things in my life. Um, and it sounds like that was kind of a similar thing for you. And sometimes it takes like this giant wake up call yeah. for us to be willing to make a change. But I think that the emotional thing is something that we just turn a blind eye to because it's so much it's easier. The hardest part. Yeah, it's, it's a lot it's, easier to be like, oh, I can't eat gluten anymore. Exactly. Okay, okay that might suck <laughs> for a minute, but that's easy. Oh, I can't eat dairy or I, can't, I have to. Okay, that's easy. But to start like really unpacking what's inside and what's, you know, maybe causing a lot of these different emotions or different things to spun up is a lot more difficult. But I, I always, you know, when I talk to other people that might be going through something similar, it's like right now in the moment, this feels so heavy and so long. And if you really think about it, whether it's two months, three months or six months or even three years of your life in like the grand scheme of things, it's not that long to really get to that other side. Um, and you, you got to go through it because it, it is so much better mm -hmm. once you kind of do. So you started this functional fitness company with your ex mm -hmm. and then you went through this divorce. Yeah. What was that like? Fun at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was really exciting at the beginning. You know, really when I, I was in my early 20s, I was going around to every boutique fitness studio in New York City and I was really trying to achieve this very physical result. I remember just waking up one day and I was like, oh my God, who is that in the mirror? I don't recognize her. And started going to all different classes and really found myself experiencing two things of one, not physically seeing the results that I wanted. Number two, in a lot of back pain, I went to the doctor. I found out I had scoliosis, was being flared up, you know, from all the high intensity workouts I was doing. And really wanted to push through that pain, probably like so many other people to achieve this physical, you know, look that I wanted. And I walked into a studio one day and they were training in this functional fitness world. I never heard of that before. And very quickly I started seeing the physical results that I wanted, but more importantly, my back pain went away. I felt energized from my workout. I felt open and just free in my body and like excited to work out. I hated working out. It always felt like a chore. I was like, oh, I have to go to this class and I want to cancel and I don't want to go. And finally it was like, I can't wait to go. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And then when I started, you know, really diving into functional fitness, I started realizing that from the second we wake up to we go to sleep, we're moving our bodies in 3D. We're reaching, we're rotating, our bodies are moving in all planes of motion. And why aren't we training that same way? And with functional fitness, you're, you know, really training for life versus training just, to train. And it was this combination of functional fitness and resistance equipment combined that gave you these unbelievable physical results, definition, toned arms, contoured abs, lifted butt, but also better posture. My flexibility was better. My range of motion was better. All these things that maybe you didn't think about of, I would, I was living in New York city. I was walking in, you know, heels on cobblestone. I'd trip, I'd catch myself because of all these weird rotations we do with your ankle, like these kind of afterthoughts. But then it hit me of, well, why isn't your workout or your fitness doing all those things for you? 
and it just completely changed my life. And I wanted to, you know, share that with so many others and started, you know, launched very down and dirty and started growing the brand. And I kind of just got to a point where we really just wanted two completely different things. We met each other quick. We got married very quick. We started a business very quick and it was all, you know, exciting and fun. And then I think once it got real, it was just like, this isn't working. You know, we're both not happy and this thing can't succeed unless both of us are happy. And I think, you know, it was definitely a difficult decision to say, can this be successful if we're not together? Because that's how it started. Um, But really having, you know, to dig deep of, well, if I'm not happy, this can never be successful. And, you know, one thing my mom always taught me was you have to eliminate the what ifs. Well, what if I tried this? And what if I did that? And what if I did that? And, you know, after you kind of go through that and maybe eliminate a lot of things, you know, I reached that point for myself where that was the right decision for me and for him and for the business and for everyone to kind of go to the next stage. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate making that decision? Because I would imagine, you know, you felt like he was a good person, had good qualities, obviously, which is why you married him and um, having this business together. Like when I have spoken about my divorce, I get so much feedback from people who are like, how do you know when to leave? And there's such a fear right now, I think, about leaving a relationship that might not be the right relationship or might not be fulfilling because of how the dating culture Mm -hmm. is. And I see so many people that are like stuck in these relationships where they're not happy, but there's a fear around like letting go of somebody good or like good on paper. Um, so how did you navigate that decision? Well, then add a business on top of all that. Um, it was really for me, like eliminating, you know, what if I tried this and what if I did that? And, you know, I had to go through the motions for myself. I think it was not about listening to other people. You know, everybody can have their opinion and, you know, whatever happened between me and him happened between me and him. And, I have my experience. He has his experience. Then there's like what really happened. But I think you you have to go through that and allow yourself to have that time. You know, maybe looking back, you're like, oh my God, I should have gotten out of that sooner. I should have saved. But it, it is what it is. And you, you, if there has to be two people willing to fight for the same thing, it can't just be one person. And I think, you know, at least for me, it was maybe almost sadder prior than it was when it was like the time for the decision because it's it's not overnight or at least for me it wasn't overnight it was a buildup you know a long time coming um and I'm also someone who doesn't want to deal with things I like to I don't want to deal with it I'm working Mm -hmm. I'm you know this company's growing let's just put my head down and work 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 and I think looking back on that whole experience and everything with my Lyme and getting so sick and coming to the other side and dealing with the emotional shit now, like I don't fester things. I don't hold things inside. If I have something to say, I have to like get it off my chest and like release it versus kind of holding it in to kind of get to those decisions quicker, maybe than letting it play out for a while. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong, Mm -hmm. but I feel like you kind of just wake up one day and you know. Yeah. I mean, so many similarities in our experiences. And I have said the same thing about my divorce where I'm like the really painful part, I would say were the two years leading up Mm -hmm. (laughs) to the divorce yeah, and that emotional turmoil and the what ifs and maybe if I try this or if I do that and just the daily, um, I don't know for I don't know a better word than turmoil, like yeah. the daily turmoil, the daily sadness, the daily stress of that where, you know, it got to the point where like when that decision was made, it was more of a burden lifted than anything. Yeah. And I think that's probably valuable for people to hear because I remember, especially in the last few months leading up to my divorce, I had so much anxiety about making the decision and just going through with it. And I remember somebody saying, like, you're standing on the edge of the cliff staring down, you know, that's the worst place to be. Mm -hmm. And 
that doesn't mean that you're going to fall. You know, you take a leap and it could be the best thing ever. Like it's yeah. not a bad thing. And that was what happened. And once the decision was made and it sounds like it was kind of similar for you, that was just an action. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of like sadness and emotion. I think as me. also like as women, we put ourselves last. Yeah. We put everyone else in front of us and everyone else's happiness in front of us. And like, it's okay to put yourself first. You know, my happiness is important to or almost more important than other people's because if I'm not happy, I can't be the best version of myself for a partner, for my friends, for my family, for my business, for anything else. And it, it you know, took me a while to kind of get to that point. Mm-hmm. And once I reached that point, it was it was clear. Yeah. Yeah, that's like what I was talking to my therapist about, yeah. like self-preservation <laughs> versus, pre, you know, preserving yeah. the work and like prioritizing everybody else and what they're getting mm-hmm. versus like, what is my intention with yeah. this and what is this doing for me? So I think that's really helpful for people. So, OK, so the functional fitness piece, mm-hmm. I'm sure so many people are listening are going, yes, this is me. I go to berries every day. I feel like shit. I'm puffy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel burnt out. I certainly had that experience when I was doing BBG, which nothing wrong with that. But it was high intensity plyometric workout day in, day out. And it really wore my body down. And um, how does functional fitness differ from something like yoga or Pilates? So really like it's almost okay. If you think about it, it's almost like yoga Pilates or at least peeve all this yoga Pilates had a baby, right? So you get this stretching flexibility component of yoga, but you get the sculpting and the low impact from Pilates. But really where I think we are so different is that we work the body in all planes of motion. So we, we like to say, you know, like we work the body in 3D. A lot of workouts are just front to back or side to side. And in PVOLV, you're really like putting your body in these internal rotations, external rotations. You're working on hip strength and, you know, opening up the body and getting your back to open up and better posture. And, you know, using those full body exercises also with like these micro movements to really sculpt and define maybe a certain body part. But it's this concept of, kind of opening everything up and then bringing it in to focus on a certain body group. But it's, I think in 2024, people are starting to wake up to this idea of like, working out is supposed to be healthy for me. It shouldn't kill me. Like this shouldn't be a punishment. I should enjoy moving my body. Like it really is a gift to be able to move your body unless that's taken away from you. You don't appreciate it, you know, but whether it's PVOLV or something else, like find something that you love to do and then it really can become a habit. And I think also this idea of that your workout should be doing so much more for you than just making you look good. Like I want to look good. I want toned arms more than anything. I want my butt lift. Like I'm a <laughs> butt girl. I want my butt perky and lifted and I want contoured app. Like, yes, if I'm putting in the time and work in the gym, I want all those physical results. But I've learned I it's equally or more important that at the same time, I don't have to pick or choose, but at the same time, I can be working on my stability, my flexibility, my range of motion, all these things that are going to make such a big impact on me kind of as I age and go through the next stages of my life. And it doesn't have to be dreadful. You know, I should feel energized after a workout. I shouldn't be hunched over and starving and like, crying because my body hurts so bad. I should be like, oh my God, my fucking arm feels (laughs) like it's shaking and going to fall off. But like, I have so much energy. I feel alive. I feel awake. Like I want to go take on my day. I feel taller. I feel stronger. Um, And that's really what we've seen from a lot of our members that, you know, experience the workout. Mm -hmm. And I love that there are like short ones and you can kind of stack them or you can do a longer one. Like it's very much there's a lot of variation and you can really tailor it to yourself. I like a short workout. Like I am. There's not, I mean, <laughs> I always say like, it's, you know, quality over quantity. Like, yeah. And with, especially with PVOLV, like you can make it the easiest thing or the hardest thing. You know, I'm, I'm sure with a lot of other workouts too, like you can be like really engaging your arm or you can just be like half-assing. And your arms, I'm looking at them now. Those are like, 
<laughs> goals. <laughs> so toned. Pivolve, pivolve arms. Yeah. Um, but it's really, you know, it's about like the mind to muscle connection, like to really understand what am I, in, you know, what muscle am I using to engage my arm to go out and to come in? It's like, for me, it's very meditative, you know, but it, if 20 minutes and you want to put all into that 20 minutes, unreal. Like I'd rather have someone do that than just half-ass like a 50 minute class. But it's also about meeting you where you are at that day. And like, it doesn't really matter the time, like, like move your body, you know? And for me, I don't do a hour class seven days a week. Like some days I'm, I just go downstairs in my gym and I just stretch. Like I put my music on, I get in the zone and I just want my blood to start moving. I want to get my energy going. And I just want to like, oh, twists and rotate and open everything up and, you know, just get my body moving in all the ways that it's meant to. I think that so often too, we commit to these longer or like depleting workouts and then we see it on our calendar and we're like, nope. (laughs) And then nothing happens that day. So I love that. I love that it's like not Like, isn't it so much easier when you start, let's say you want to start eating healthy Mm -hmm. and you actually enjoy what you're eating or you're cooking or you're doing like it makes it just so much easier to incorporate into your life and I feel like with that should be the same with fitness like Mm -hmm. you your body should be craving that style of movement it should be wanting to go and do those exercises like you see me keep like doing all Mm because I'm like my body wants to like flex and rotate and and you're very open so I go to dinner all the time people like your posture is amazing Mm -hmm. I'm like what it doesn't even register like yeah. when I eight years ago, not really like my flexibility was shit. I was hunched over, but like it feels bad if I'm like this because mm-hmm. I'm I'm hunched, you know, over. like <laughs> but my body craves it. Yeah. And like it works for me and you have you have to find what works for you. Mm-hmm. Well, you got a major endorsement. Mm-hmm. by one Insane. Jennifer Aniston. Crazy. I know you've told this story before, but I think it's it's just crazy. crazy. I can't imagine as a business owner getting this email that you got. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I heard you say, and you can tell the story here that she had all these sensitivities and had been kind of broken down from like over, you know, high intensity exercise. And I was like, she's one of us. (laughs) She is. She really is. She's the absolute, like she's a dream. She's the absolute best. I think when we like think of health and wellness and like a cultural icon, like you really think of her, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout all the years and her just always being like at the top of like leading that charge of what's, what she doing, everybody kind of wanting to listen to what she has going on and to get an email that she's a secret streamer and she loves Pvolv, like first, like, ha ha ha, like, okay. And then when it really is her, it's like, what the hell? Like, what, you know? I remember when Danny, who's a trainer at our LA studio and her trainer went to go train her. I'm like, you have to call me the second you leave. Like, there's no way it's her. No, no, no. And she's like, no, it's her. Like she had the equipment and she knew every, like she's been doing it for so long and she's obsessed with it. And then getting an email from her team and like just learning more about her and her story of her having like a back injury and you know, not being able to do some of the workouts that she was doing previously. She sees one of her girlfriends. Oh my God, you look amazing. What are you doing? I do Pvolve. What the hell is Pvolve? And orders the equipment and starts streaming at home and, you know, starts to understand of, I feel so strong in my body. And like, I feel my little tiny muscle shaking that like burn that we all want, but I don't feel depleted. Like my back's not hurting. My knee's not flaring up. I actually feel stronger. I feel energized, open, more defined. And like, how do more people not know about this? You know, and even saying like, I feel better than I did in my twenties. Like, I wish I didn't break my body down so much when I was, you know, younger. And it's a lot of similarities to my story of why I started this. And so many of our members story of like, you don't have to punish yourself to get results. Like, we all want to look great, but we want to feel 10 times better. And you, you know, previously you kind of had to like pick or choose. It was like, I'm going to do high intensity workouts or I'm going to physical therapy. You know, it was like, you kind of can have your cake and eat it too with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's been doing this now for over two years and we have a lot of exciting stuff launching with her in the fall and for holiday and new years. And just to see her evolution and like how much she believes 
in this method and this brand and our mission and just wants people to move and move your body. And there is a better way to do it to not break you down and still see results. It's it's insane. It has to be very validating to have someone like that, because to your point, she is an icon. Yeah. And I mean, she's what, in her 50s now? Yeah. She looks insane. amazing. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> yeah. And I think there has always been this attitude of no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. And still, whenever I do fitness focused episodes and have people send in questions, they're like, if I don't get sore, was that a good workout? And like how many calories, you know, it's very yeah. like focused on these other metrics and nobody is really thinking about longevity and aging. And I have had other fitness professionals on the show who have talked about that, how, you know, when you get older, you need that flexibility. You need to be able to mm -hmm. rotate. You need to be able to react if you trip, right? Yeah. You need to be able to, um, have strength. It's not just like doing your squats or yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, you know, doing your high intensity. Like you, you have to um, take care of your body and have it work like a well-oiled machine essentially. Yeah. Right. I mean, your body's your vehicle to life, yeah. you know, and the second that stops working, you know, mm -hmm. it's not great. Well, and you see people who are older, like so many issues begin to arise from sarcopenia, like losing muscle and then they become frail and then yep. the falls happen, you know, and some of this is inevitable as you age, like you're going to lose muscle. You're going to become well, more, women more frail. over, you know, once you hit 30, you know, you lose about 8% of muscle mass every decade. Crazy. And so, you know, when we first started, we were, we had one class type, it was strength and sculpt. And over the last seven and a half years, kind of adding everything, around our low impact cardio, our weight training classes, more stretch and recovery to really kind of be like a one-stop shop for everything that you'll need through each stage of your life um, to help you, you know, reach all your goals, whatever those may be, and kind of help you start wherever you're starting from. Mm -hmm. So it's been four years since the Lyme 2020 yeah four years oh my god so what is your lifestyle like now we know your workouts but how do you make sure that you don't get back into that place you don't get into a place where you are susceptible to maybe some kind of like flare-up mm -hmm. or um, complication from having had that yeah I mean knock on wood the last flare-up I had was right after I froze my eggs which mm. I cannot I mean that's that was crazy so I get that but um, beyond that, what was crazy about that? <laughs> well, I mean, you're injecting yourself with so many hormones yeah. in two weeks and then, you know, you want your body to be normal. It's actually very easy for me during, but nobody tells you after is when the shit hits a fan. And I've had a few girlfriends go through it and they've said the same thing. How so? I would say like the bloating, the weight mm. gain, mm -hmm. you just fluctuations of mood and like sweating, like kind of that very hormone imbalanced state. It happened for me after. Mm, like it for was, how long? For me, it was about six, seven months after. <laughs> My girlfriends have that have recently done it. It's been a little bit less for them. Um, you know, doing more acupuncture and more like saunas and things like just to kind of get those hormones out of you. But I'm also someone who's very sensitive. And I think, especially after the Lyme, extremely sensitive to all those types of things. Like when you're pumping yourselves with that many hormones in a very short time, but you know, still glad I did it. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say the biggest changes I've made are definitely like when it comes to work schedule, you know, I'm a morning person. I'm up early. I would say the first like two hours of my morning are very sacred to me. So I kind of block that off for myself. I like to take my animals outside. I check my email. I like to work out and like very just clearly think what I have to do for the day and like be in the right mindset before I sit down at my computer where maybe I was like, didn't matter what time my day started before. It was like very sporadic, but I like to have a consistent schedule each day. And for me, any major big meetings that I need to have. It's like, let's have those in the morning or more in my prime time. And like really by 5 p.m. Like, I'm done. Like 
five thirty if I have to push it. But like I'm my I'm my brain's fried. I'm toast. Like I can't look at things. I can't think. And like before it'd be like 10 o'clock at night and I'd be like, yep, looking and responding right now. And like that person didn't need me to respond right now. If they needed me to, they'd call me on the phone. Like this is urgent. I need an answer tonight. But I would just feel this like obligation that anytime anybody would text me, slack me, email me, like they needed a very thorough response in like 15 seconds. It didn't matter if I was any time of the day it was. And so like shutting down, cooking, not looking at my phone, getting on the couch, like watching my housewives, like really zoning out and just like having more me time um, and just saying kind of no to things more. But I think the business is in a better place where I can do that and really having to teach myself how to not be in the weeds on everything. You know, as the business grows and your team grows, like you hired those people for a reason and really not like letting them do their thing and not wanting to micromanage and be in the weeds on everything. Um, and just, you know, going to bed early, waking up at the same time, having dinner at this, like I love, I feel so safe in a routine. And like, I will break it every now and again, you know, it's my birthday or I'm went to Europe or like I'm going away with my brother and his fiance, like those things, if I go to like a visa and I stay up late and maybe have fun for three days, like it's worth it to me, but I know what to do when I come back and like supplements and vitamins and IVs and extra sauna, like just to get my immune system strong and keep it strong. Um, you know, it's all about like when it's worth it to say yes. Mm -hmm. If not, like I like to be in bed by nine. Yeah. And you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like my Nana will call me and like, I miss her call. Yeah. Cause I'm sleeping. <laughs> I'm like, Nana, so like you stay up later than me. You My know, grandmother but... sometimes will text me at I like, I don't even, 1130 her time. And yeah. I'm like, no, I'm no. I'm sleeping. <laughs> like I'm fast asleep. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like you know the tools that work for you. And, you know, I think that that's like ultimately what wellness is. It's not this like rigid thing. And that's the p approach yeah. too, right? And it's just like finding what works for you and finding what feels good. Because I think that, especially over the past few years, I think there's a shift happening now, like you mentioned before. People looked at wellness as this thing that had to be rigid mm -hmm. and copy other people's wellness routines. And it's like, no, that's not wellness, I don't think, personally. No. Like, it's whatever makes you feel your best. Yeah. And if that's going to bed early and, you know, having boundaries and being done by a certain time or starting at a certain time, like for me, I'm most on fire at seven in the morning <laughs> to yeah. like nine. I probably shouldn't do this, but lately I've been working during that time because I get so much done. Right. And then right. at nine, I go for a walk and yeah. I'm outside and I meditate and I do my thing, but my brain is on fire when I yeah. wake up. Um, and that's what works for me. But that might be like, very terrible for, for you. Well, I, was, I was just talking to my girlfriend this morning and we both listened to like the same podcast. And she's like, well, basically everything that I do is shit. I'm like, well, why? What'd they say? And she's like, I need to be eating before my workout, eating this and that like, you know, for a woman and this is a science. And I was like, okay, like you feel amazing right now. You know, she has three kids and she's like on fire, right? She feels good. She looks good. She's just like has all this energy. I'm like, well, maybe that's not you right now. And I think the other biggest thing to know is like what works for you today isn't always going to work for you, right? Especially for women, like our hormones, as we age, we go through so many different state, like stages and changes in our lives. And like, if it works for you now, like, great, keep going with it. But like, know when to tune in when something isn't working. And like, there is so much information out there and it's amazing. And I, I love listening to every podcast and like, I listen to yours every week <laughs> and Skinny's and Andrew Huberman, like so many different people. And I absorb so much, but I just like, I take nuggets and I'm like, oh, that like, out of the hour, like those couple things that person said, that's interesting. Should I try that? Okay. And take note, like, did that feel good? Like, how does that make me feel? And like, use other people's routines as inspiration or maybe like, oh, that's cool what she's doing. Let me try it. But like, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean it's the end all be all. You have to be so aware and in tune because that person 
maybe isn't going, you know, isn't going through the same thing as you are. They don't live in the same place. They don't have the same job. They don't have the same home life. Like there's so many outside factors that affect how all these wellnessy things can and should make you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I think the ultimate gauge should be, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know for myself, like some things work for me in the first week of my cycle that don't work for Mm -hmm. me in the fourth. Like that's how much variation and fluctuation there is. And I love what you said about taking nuggets because people always ask me or they DM me, you know, oh, your guest that week had conflicting information to your guest this week. And people ask, how do you navigate and apply all of the things that you learn in your podcast? I'm like, I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I think I said in a podcast recently, I maybe take 1% of it. I listen for what sounds relevant and helpful to me, to your point, depending on whatever I'm going through, whatever I feel like I might need or might want to tweak or something's yeah. not working for me. And, oh, I like that. I'm going to try that. But it's like, take what you feel might enhance your life and then leave the rest. hundred percent. Like know. that's like the end all. I think the end all goal is mm-hmm. if everybody can try to get to that place to like, there's nothing more powerful than when you know yourself and you know your body mm-hmm. and you kind of pick up on those cues. Yeah. And I think for some people who are starting with absolutely nothing, it's helpful to listen and listen to a conversation yeah. like this and be like, okay, I'm going to try maybe not being on my phone in the morning and or pick one area. I think yeah. when people try to do like, I'm going to totally overhaul my food and my fitness and my, it's like, it's too much. Like just yeah. pick one. Like for I say me, people get the fuck it. Right. <laughs> like I started with fitness mm-hmm. and then once I started like feeling better in my body, then it was like, Oh, well maybe, what would happen if I started eating better? And then what would happen if I started doing this? But like baby steps, you know, like you really want to, create a new habit and change your lifestyle. It's all about those consistent baby steps. Yeah. And I think a lot of it really does start with movement. You hear people debate what's more important, diet or exercise. But I think that when you are consistently moving, whatever that looks like for you, even if it's going for a 10 minute walk every day, then you start to be motivated to make better choices when it comes to what you're eating, your lifestyle, when you're going to bed, like how you're treating your body. I really yeah. think that it does kind of start there. Um, so I think if anybody is like starting right now from the ground up and they don't know what to do, like even just doing a 10 minute Love class mm-hmm. or something like yeah. then well, that's going to have ripple yeah. effects mm-hmm. and it's going to affect so many different areas of your life. So I love your approach. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think it's amazing. So tell everybody where they can find you and where they can find Pvolve. So you can find me at R Catsman on Instagram. Uh, Pvolve's at Pvolve or Pvolve.com. We have a code for you and your listeners. Mm-hmm. Code Blonde for 15% off site-wide at Pvolve and 15% off your first class uh, for our studios. Amazing. And you have studios all over. We do. New York, Chicago, LA, and then like a bunch of franchise locations. We'll have about 20 studios open at the end of the year. Santa Monica just opened. We have two in San Diego, Atlanta, Nashville, New Jersey, Salt Lake City. I'm going to Fort Worth, Texas. I'm going to be missing a bunch, but a lot coming all over. Amazing. And I'm Mm -hmm. very impressed that with all of that, you're done working at 530. That's my goal. Yeah, lose five days. Yeah, you know, some weeks are worse than others, but we we strive for it. I'm going to strive for that too. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me.